worshipped by devoted fans for 20 years and hailed by his peers as a genius. He's the outspoken outsider of British pop, living in self-imposed exile without a record deal. Morrissey remains what he's always been, a true original and a complete mystery. Oscar Wilde put all his wit into his life. Morrissey, it seems to me, and I completely identify with Morrissey, has sat in a darkened room and been witty on paper. He is one of the only people in pop who has managed to turn themselves into a virtual mythological archetype. He's got an interesting face. He looks to have a story to tell. So sleep and dream of love. His eccentricity lies in his mercurial nature, in his ambiguity about his sexuality, in the strength and intellectual force of his writing. He's so catered for those sort of lonely misfits that spent a lot of time in their bedrooms. And there's certain feelings and ideas that he has, that he owns. He's an original of the species. There's not many of them. He is certainly one of Rock's great enigmas. I don't think Morris is normal. I think he spent his entire adult life trying to be anything but normal. I can't imagine him going in a trendy bar. I can't even imagine him walking through Notting Hill Gate. Rumours about Morrissey abound, but no one knows the truth. What do you think he's really like? Nobody knows. You don't know, I don't know. I'd say his mother knows. He probably doesn't even know. With his first major TV interview for 16 years, and unprecedented access to his life on tour and at home in Los Angeles, it's time to put the record straight with an exclusive insight into what it's like being Morrissey. At the end of the day, he lives in LA, he drives a jack, he goes to the beach. I don't think he's living in a dark room dressed in black. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I get you're wasting your time The more you ignore me the closer I get you're wasting your time Age gives you a great sense of proportion and you can be very hard on yourself when you're younger and but now I just think well everybody's absolutely mad and I'm doing quite well. Summer 2002, and Morrissey is on a world tour, attracting a new generation of fans. Morrissey is the legend. He's an absolute legend, the best front man I've ever seen, and that's above Bono, that's above Lane Gallagher, that's above Mick Jacker, everybody. Morrissey represents everything for us. He's uh, our god here in Athens. He gets better and better. The new material is just amazing, and he's still an enigma. There's still something there that keeps us all interested and keeps us here. Now 43 years old, one of the most iconic men in rock music has returned home for two rare London concerts. Despite no publicity, all 10,000 tickets are sold out within a few hours. This is the Churchill Suite. The sort of things that you end up doing for a television camera. <laughs> normal, isn't it? I mean, how many people did he send to their deaths just to make up the numbers? When Morrissey comes to England, you fucking know about it. You know, not because he does a press conference at the airport, you know, or not because he's going down to the Met Bar. You know about it because you know about it, you know? It's as simple as that. First night at the Royal Albert Hall, and expectations are high. So here we are backstage, and as you can see, the tension is mounting. 
even before he's on stage, I think that's amazing. Sort of, you, know, you hear those football chants, and Marcy, Marcy, you know, the football chants start. I smell assassination. I smell gunpowder. <laughs> Bells is the cue for Morrissey and the guys to walk out on. That's the way it goes. Come on, boss. That's Keep them eyes up. Pay attention, look at the Yeah, nice one. come over here and do a brief tour and it's kind of like he flexes a muscle you know he has the crowd going absolutely bonkers <laughs> business as usual in Morrissey land people treat it like almost like a religious experience it's crazy I remember When Morrissey reaches over the mic to touch you, you no longer feel lonely, you feel celebrated in the love of the one common sovereign, which is Morrissey. From the very start of Morrissey's solo career, his concerts have been unique in their scenes of frenzied desperation as fans seek to pay homage in the flesh. Flinging themselves onto the stage to catch the king's touch, you know, the king could cure, in some way, the scrofula of loneliness. If you notice, it's nearly all blokes. It's not women that do it, it's men. Men are in love with him, not women. Because these are fully formed adults, and mostly male, it's inexplicable. It doesn't fit into the, any kind of stereotyped heterosexual fantasy. Young heterosexual men and now older heterosexual men respond to that at a homoerotic level. I think it speaks to the homosexual component in a lot of heterosexual men. 